the natural equality of men to be acknowledged by samuel puffendorf sixteen thirty two to sixteen ninety four from the whole duty of man according to the law of nature this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org man is a creature not only most solicitous for the preservation of himself but has of himself also so nice an estimation and value that to diminish anything thereof does frequently move in him as great indignation as if a mischief were done to his body or estate nay there seems to him to be somewhat of dignity in the appellation of man so that the last and most efficacious argument to curb the arrogance of insulting men is usually i am not a dog but a man as well as yourself since then human nature is the same in us all and since no man will or can cheerfully join in society with any by whom he is not at least to be esteemed equally as a man and as a partaker of the same common nature it follows that amongst those duties which men owe to each other this obtains the second place that every man esteem and treat another as naturally equal to himself or as one who is a man as well as he now this equality of mankind does not alone consist in this that men of ripe age have almost the same strength or if one be weaker he may be able to kill the stronger either by treachery or dexterity or by being better furnished with weapons but in this that though nature may have accomplished one man beyond another with various endowments of body and mind yet nevertheless he is obliged to an observation of the precepts of the law natural towards the meaner person after the same manner as himself expects the same from others and has not therefore any greater liberty given him to insult upon his fellows as on the other side the niggardliness of nature or fortune cannot of themselves set any man so low as that he shall be in worse condition as to the enjoyment of common right than others but what one man may rightfully demand or expect from another the same is due to others also circumstances being alike from him and whatsoever one shall deem reasonable to be done by others the like it is most just he practise himself for the obligation of maintaining society among mankind equally binds every man neither may one man more than another violate the laws of nature in any part not but that there are other popular reasons which illustrate this equality to wit that we are all descended from the same stock that we are all born nourished and die after the same manner and that god has not given any of us certain assurance that our happy condition in the world shall not at one time or other be changed besides the precepts of the christian religion tell us that god favors not man for his nobility power or wealth but for sincere piety which may as well be found in a mean and humble man as in those of high degree now from this equality it follows that he who would use the assistance of others in promoting his own advantage ought to be as free and ready to use his power and abilities for their service when they want his help and assistance on the like occasions for he who requires that other men should do him kindnesses and expects himself to be free from doing the like must be of opinion that those other men are below himself and not his equals hence as those persons are the best members of a community who without any difficulty allow the same things to their neighbor that themselves require of him so those are also uncapable of society who setting a high rate on themselves in regard to others will take upon them to act anything towards their neighbor and expect greater deference and more respect than the rest of mankind 
in this insolent manner demanding a greater portion unto themselves in those things to which all men have a common right they can in reason claim no larger a share than other men whence this also is an universal duty of the law natural that no man who has not a peculiar right ought to arrogate more to himself than he is ready to allow to his fellows but that he permit other men to enjoy equal privileges with himself the same equality also shows that every man's behavior ought to be when his business is to distribute justice among others to wit that he treat them as equals and indulge not that unless the merits of the cause require it to one which he denies to another for if he do otherwise he who is discountenanced is at the same time affronted and wronged and loses somewhat of the dignity which nature bestowed upon him whence it follows that things which are in common are of right to be divided by equal parts among those who are equal where the thing will not admit of division they who are equally concerned are to use it indifferently and if the quantity of the thing will bear it as much as each party shall think fit but if this cannot be allowed then it is to be used after a stated manner and proportionate to the number of the claimants because tis not profitable to find out any other way of observing equality but if it be a thing of that nature as not to be capable of being divided nor of being possessed in common then it must be used by turns and if this yet will not answer the point and it is not possible the rest should be satisfied by an equivalent the best way must be to determine possession by lot for in such cases no fitter method can be thought on to remove all opinion of partiality and contempt of any party without debasing the person whom fortune does not favor the consideration of this natural equality among men ought to take from us all pride a vice which consists herein when a man without any reason or without sufficient reason prefers himself to others behaving himself contemptuously and haughtily towards them as being in his esteem base underlings unworthy of his consideration or regard we say without any reason for where a man is regularly possessed of some right which gives him a preference to other men he may lawfully make use of and assert the same so it be without vain ostentation and the contempt of others as on the contrary every one is with good reason to yield that respect and honor which is due to another but for the rest true generosity is always for its companion a decorous humility which arises from a reflection on the infirmity of our nature and the faults of which ourselves either have been or may hereafter be guilty which are not less heinous than those which may be committed by other men the inference we ought to make from hence is that we do not overvalue ourselves with regard to others considering that they equally with us are endowed with the free use of their understanding which they are also capable of managing to as good purpose the regular use whereof is that alone which a man can call his own and upon which the true value of himself depends but for a man without any reason to set a high esteem upon himself is a most ridiculous vice first because tis in itself silly for a man to carry it high for nothing at all and then because i must suppose all other men to be coxcombs if i expect from them a great regard when i deserve none the violation of this duty is yet carried farther if a man show his contempt for another by outward signs actions words looks or any other abusive way and this fault is therefore the more grievous because it easily excites the spirits of men to anger and revenge so that there are many who will rather venture their lives upon the spot much more will they break the public peace than put up an affront of that nature 
counting that hereby their honor is wounded and a slur is put upon their reputation in the untainted preservation of which consists all their self-satisfaction and pleasure of mind end of the natural equality of men to be acknowledged by samuel puffendorf sixteen thirty two to sixteen ninety four from the whole duty of man according to the law of nature